All right. So John, with within vSAN, of course, you know, we we've built in these these abilities to uh, be able to uh, tolerate failure. Well, what what happens when there's uh, too many failures uh, in a vSAN cluster? So let's say you design for RAID one, which you know is able to tolerate up to one failure by design, or RAID five up to one failure. Um, but let's say you have more failures than that. Um, so let's say you know you've got a, a cluster that's maybe it's ten nodes. Um, it's worth noting if I have two hosts that fail, if one fails or one drive fails, and then there's an amount of time elapses and then another failure happens, there's actually a decent chance that I was able to rebuild into the existing free space. So I don't have uh, hot spares in a vSAN cluster, all of my Slack space, all of my extra space that's sitting there, uh, sitting idle, that is my hot spare effectively. And so um, if you have a drive fail on Friday, there's no need to rush to the data center. You can get it after the weekend um, because there's assuming you had enough raw space in that cluster, you'll just see the raw space diminish temporarily as uh, it uses that for repair. Now, what happens if I exceed the design and I have the worst case happen? So I have two hosts completely fail simultaneously, no time for repair operation in my 10 node cluster. What happens to my, my poor little um, you know, virtual machine that was only designed for one failure? Well, it might survive. In fact, it probably will survive. So assuming this is a little 100 gigabyte uh, VM, I don't have a Stripe policy, it's just going to be two components and a witness component. Now the odds of both of both of those failures impacting two of those three components is actually not the majority. In fact, the larger the cluster gets, the the odds actually increase of any given one VM surviving. Now there may be some VMs that don't survive, but it actually becomes you get kind of an exponential effect of it's a smaller and smaller percentage of the cluster um, that you basically get lucky. Um, now, there are some things that would diminish that if you had Stripe, if you had very large objects that had chunked out into a lot of components, there'd be some more risk. But for your typical VMD, typical VMs, no Stripe policy, 255 gigabytes, um, you're just going to get luckier and luckier. In fact, there's a blog on this topic, you know, scale up vSAN to scale down failure. There's a nice little chart there that illustrates this. Uh, but this is something to think about. Now, please don't design for this and say, well, I have to be able to survive two failures. I'm only going to ever use RAID 1, RAID 5. But do realize that it's, um, subsequent failures, especially if they're spaced out or uh, concurrent failures uh, that exceed design tolerances in a large cluster. Yes, you might have to restore some things from backup, but it might be a very small amount. And do remember if those hosts, let's say the motherboards just died and the, that's the VM going unavailable, the drives are still healthy. If you go get your four hour parts, you swap the motherboards, you bring them back up. Um, vSAN's back, they, you've regained a quorum again. You haven't lost data. You just lost availability. Now the virtual machines can be fired back on. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a quite a bit of resiliency even when you exceed plan tolerances. Sure, sure. And I would imagine too, when we think about the fact that, you know, we can set these planned levels of failures to tolerate that, that since that's on an per object basis, that in fact, you can have more than that, the number of uh, prescribed failures occur on other hosts and it really doesn't apply to those objects. I mean, you know, it's it, that level of uh, prescription only applies for the host that those objects live on. And, and so it's sort of an interesting thing because, you know, we, we don't necessarily wide stripe the data across all of the hosts in the vSAN cluster. And it's a, it's really a great um, side effect of that. Yeah, and, and this is very different from kind of your, your traditional uh, two controller modular storage array to where if both if one of those controllers was in maintenance and the other one failed or both of them failed, everything goes down. It's an all or nothing. Or if you design that wide stripe storage pool um, for you know a, a giant RAID 10 and you had two drives fail, everything was gone. And now you're potentially restoring hundreds of terabytes of data. This is a very different uh, failure mode on exceeding tolerances.